Probably the main thing people remember about this episode is that it's the one where Barbara Streisand randomly strolls through a scene. Badge of Dishonor was directed by Richard Compton and was written by Michael Duggan and Peter Lance from a story idea by Dick Wolf. Among the many other episodes that Wolf has had a hand in, he also contributed the story idea for last season's Knock Knock Who's There. And this episode has pretty much that exact same story. So if you've seen Knock Knock Who's There, you're probably safe with skipping this one. It kicks off with a great opening sequence set to Glory Glory by Underworld, which is a great song and immediately sets the perfect tone. An undercover Tubbs meets with some ne'er-do-wells at the dock for a drug buy. Vice has the meat staked out, but before they can move in, a bunch of uniformed police officers swarm in and shoot all the dealers before taking the cocaine and speeding off. Tubbs only survives by jumping in the water. He spots a homeless woman standing by the dock, silently observing all the activity. At Vice headquarters, the detectives are joined by Lieutenant Dominguez of Special Operations, who is certain that none of his officers were involved in the raid. Weapons were recently stolen from a police warehouse, and Dominguez, who is played by seasoned film and television veteran Rennie Santoni, thinks the raid was the work of gang members posing as cops. Vice, however, is pretty certain that at the least there is a highly placed leak in Dominguez's department who is giving out information as to when and where these big money deals are taking place. A group of special operations officers rob and murder another dealer. When Tubbs arrives to investigate, he spots the same homeless woman at the crime scene. Tubbs chases her down to Eyes of a Stranger by the Paolas. She pulls a gun on him, whereupon he pulls out his badge and identifies himself as a cop. She pulls out her own badge and identifies herself as a detective with special operations named Montana Stone, who is played by Michelle Shea, who we last saw last season on the episode Teresa playing Helena Bonham Carter's doctor in rehab. Montana takes Tubbs into the homeless camp where she's been living undercover for the past several months. She tells Tubbs she wrote up a report about the dealer killings that she witnessed in the opening sequence, but somehow that report never made it into the case file. This confirms that there's a leak somewhere in Lieutenant Dominguez's department. Vice looks into the records of Dominguez's special operations cops and discover that several of them have sealed juvenile records. Four of those cops have been conducting the raids, headed up by a cop named Cologne, who is played by Nick Corey, who we last saw in season three's The Good Caller. At Castillo's suggestion, Crockett and Tubbs drop by Dominguez's home, which is on a luxurious yacht that he can't possibly afford on a policeman's salary. When Crockett and Tubbs arrive at the harbor, a woman slowly strolls by Crockett's Ferrari. And yeah, that's the legendary Barbara Streisand doing an uncredited cameo on Miami Vice as woman who strolls by Crockett's Ferrari. Which seems really bizarre and random, until you remember that at this particular point in history, Barbara Streisand was dating Don Johnson. Crockett and Tubbs talk to Dominguez, who turns out to be living on a yacht because he has a very wealthy wife. Dominguez tells them he's been carrying on his own secret investigations into the dealer killings and asks them to meet him in his office the next day. Someone breaks into special operations at night and snoops through case files. Later, Montana meets with Cologne and the other dirty cops and takes her cut of the stolen cash because yeah, she's the one who's been feeding them information and serving as their lookout. Tubbs and Crockett meet with Dominguez, who had been tipped off by an informant that a string of recent dealer killings might have been the work of cops. Crockett and Tubbs sort through Dominguez's files and find that Montana was on the scene at six of the recent dealer killings, which definitely implicates her. Later, Cologne and his accomplices raid Dominguez's yacht and murder him and his wife. Tubbs catches Montana snooping through the special operations files and arrests her. Montana wants to cut a deal. She will help Vice take down Cologne and his accomplices as long as Tubbs promises to keep the homeless camp that she's been funding with her share of the dirty money operational. So Montana wears a wire and accompanies an undercover Tubbs to a meeting with Cologne and his crew. She introduces him as a dealer willing to buy all their stolen keys of cocaine. Tubbs is recognized by one of the dirty cops, though, and a big shootout ensues. The dirty cops are all killed, and Montana dies in Tubbs's arms. In the final scene, Crockett and Tubbs attend the opening of a soup kitchen lunch truck dedicated to Montana. This episode is not at all bad, but I'd think much kindly of it if it wasn't such a close copy of Knock Knock Who's There, and Knock Knock Who's There at least has the tremendous advantage of guest starring a villainous tuxedo-clad Ian McShane. Knock Knock Who's There centered around a high-ranking female DEA agent who reluctantly participates in violent raids on drug dealers to raise money for her sick child. And here Montana is a high-ranking female special operations detective who reluctantly participates in violent raids on drug dealers to raise money to feed the homeless. The basic story beats are the same, and it's hard to shake the sense of deja vu. But this one has some especially good music music choices, it's well shot, and the action scenes are very good. I just wish they'd tried a little harder to put a fresh spin on a story we've seen before. Three Flamingos. 
Next time, Stanley Tucci returns as Frank Mosca, and it goes very poorly for Gina. Thank you very much for joining me, and I'll meet you back here later.